The beauty of mathematics is that everything in the physical universe can be described mathematically. Even something as simple as a straight line can be described in numbers. And because linear regression is all about a straight line, we need to know how to describe it. Regression uses the general linear model, GLM, meaning that we describe the relationship between variables using the model of a straight line. We create a scatter plot of the related data, and then we use a formula to describe the line that best fits among those data points. In this example of height and weight in a scatter plot, we see that as children get older, they tend to weigh more. Yes, you can find some taller children who weigh less than some younger children, but in general, the linear model works well. Let's look at this simple scatter plot for pirates. Here, I have graphed the cases of scurvy on board the pirate ship with crew support for mutiny. I have also added a straight horizontal line that represents the mean. You can see that almost none of the cases fall exactly on the mean. When you predict using the mean, every data point deviates from the mean of y. And this is called residual variance. The dotted lines represent the residual variance or error. So here we have a straight line with a certain amount of residual error. Linear regression allows us to create another straight line that has less error, and it looks like this. This is the line of best fit, aka the regression line. The line of best fit is a straight line on the scatter plot that passes, on the average, through the center of all the y scores at each x. Like a mean, it passes through the middle of the data. But this line of best fit has much less residual error than predicting with the mean. Predicting with the regression line will give us better predictions than by using the mean. Look again at the amount of error with the mean, and now with the regression line. Mean, regression line. The linear regression line allows us to make better prediction because it passes through the middle of the scores. It does two things. It summarizes the linear relationship between x and y so that it can be used to predict a subject's y score at any given x score. That predicted score is called y hat. So if I know your height, I can predict your weight. The value of the predicted score indicated with that caret above the y is called y hat. It summarizes the linear relationship between x and y, and that can be used to predict a subject's y score for any given x score. So if I know your height, I can predict your weight. The value of the predicted score is indicated with the caret above the y, which is called y hat. So y hat is your predicted value. Quick digression. Y hat is also the vanity plate of Dr. Todd Little, who runs Stats Camp. Yes, there is such a thing as Stats Camp. It's a summer camp for nerds. One whole week, nothing but advanced stats. Greatest thing ever. Okay, enough of that. A straight line can be represented graphically, i.e. drawn, or mathematically, with an equation. Mathematically, the line looks like this y hat equals a plus bx. y hat is the predicted value. If I know that you are six years old, I could use this regression line to predict that you weigh 50 pounds. That is the y hat value. If you actually weigh 54 pounds, then my y hat prediction has four pounds of residual error. By the way, quick shout out to any six-year-olds watching this video. You're super smart. Good for you. A is a constant value in the equation representing y hat when x equals zero. 
It's also called the y-intercept because it is where the regression line intercepts the y-axis. B is the slope of a straight line. The degree that it is sloped up or down or is more horizontal than vertical. X is a raw score used for prediction. We will call this the X value. Once you have calculated an equation for a regression line, you can then plug in any X value from the data set and predict a Y hat value. So let's look at that in more detail. The Y intercept is labeled A. It represents a constant value of Y when X is zero. So when an X variable is correlated with a Y variable, then the Y intercept indicates a starting point to which we add additional information from B. In a way, you could think of it as prediction with a mean in that it is a starting point to which we add or subtract information, but the Y intercept is not actually the mean of Y. Unless, of course, the X variable tells you nothing about the Y variable, there is no relationship between the variables, in which case the regression line is flat and every y hat predicted value equals a. So that would be predicting with the mean. When there's no correlation, the best predictor of any y value would be the mean of y. When there is a correlation, the y intercept is our starting point, but it will not be the mean. The y intercept, or a, is a constant in the SPSS output. On a graph, it is the point where the regression line crosses the y-axis. The slope is the value for b. It indicates the direction and the rate of change in the line. The slope indicates the direction in which y changes as x increases. If the slope is positive, as x increases, y also increases. Direct relationship or positive correlation. If the slope is negative, as x increases, y decreases. Inverse relationship or negative correlation. The slope also indicates the rate at which y changes. A steeper slope, i.e. closer to 45 degrees, indicates a faster change between the variables. Together, a and b, the y-intercept and the slope, define the regression equation using the method of least squares. The line of best fit is the line with the least amount of residual error in the sum of squares. One final note about equations. The formula y hat equals a plus bx is the general equation for a straight line, but this is not a regression equation yet. It becomes a regression equation when you plug in actual numbers for a and b y hat equals 6.33 plus 12.11x is an example of an actual specific regression equation because it has the values in it.